In Carcassonne, the game board is built collaboratively as each of the players lay down tiles to create the map, and then they put their followers down on those tiles to claim certain features. The original game accommodates five players, and with the Inns and Cathedrals expansion, you can bring it up to six. There's also a whole lot of other expansions which allow for different ways to earn points, different structures, and also an element of real competitive interplayer play. Each player begins their turn of Carcassonne by drawing a tile and adding it to the game board in such a way that it creates a complete image with the tiles that it's placed adjacent to. At this point, they can also choose to take one of their followers and place them on the tile that they have just placed. The way a follower is placed on a tile determines the amount of points that it's going to earn you as the game goes on and the role that it plays. A robber is placed on a road, and it gains one point for every tile that that road goes through once the road is completed. A knight is placed in a city and gains two points for every tile that, that city encompasses, as well as two points for the flags that are in the city. A monk is placed on a cloister and gains nine points once that cloister is surrounded by other tiles. The robbers and the monks and the knights score their points once their features are completed and then they're removed from the board so the player can have that figure to use again. These followers can stay on the board until the end of the game, but in that case they tend to earn less points. So unlike the other three kinds of followers, farmers always stay on the board until the very end of the game. Uh, to distinguish them from the others, they're turned on their side and they're placed in a field space rather than on any one of the features. At the end of the game, each farmer is worth four points for every complete city that is adjacent to or entirely surrounded by their field. And a field in this case is defined as one continuous space that's surrounded by roads, complete cities, or the edges of the map. Followers can only be placed on an unoccupied, incomplete structure and only on the tile that's being played right now. Those unoccupied structures, however, as the game board expands, can join together. So you can end up with a completed structure that has two different followers on it that belong to two different players. And in that case, those two different players get to split the points. The game ends when all of the tiles have been used to build the map. And the winner is the player that has gained the most points during the course of the game. Carcassonne's simplicity makes it a really good choice as a family game or as an introduction to new players, but this doesn't mean that it's entirely devoid of strategy. Because you have a limited number of followers to place on the map, and because farmers always stay until the end, you have to be careful in deciding when to place a follower and when to just let a structure go. I think Carcassonne's a great game. I was only introduced to it recently, and I'm already really excited about trying a lot of the expansions. It's a very snappy gameplay, so all the turns are very short, everything's moving very quickly, people aren't going to get bored. One con for that, though, is that if the game goes on for any length of time, you may end up with that simplicity of gameplay irritating a few people. They might get a bit bored by the end of it. Also, if you add too many expansions to the game, and there are a lot to add, you may end up with a game that's just ridiculously long. One other thing to be aware of with the expansions is particularly if you add things like Princess and Dragon or the Tower that actually let you remove other players' followers from the game, a two-player game in particular can get a little bit nasty and hyper-competitive. This isn't the kind of thing that I would necessarily recommend for, say, a couple that just started dating. That said, the expansions are one of Carcassonne's greatest strengths. They let you really modify the feel and general gameplay to customize it to whatever group you're playing with at the time. This is also a classic game for a reason. It has been around for a long time and has continued to keep people engaged, and it's something that I would really recommend everybody try at least once.